We are here with country music artist Jordan Rayner. Jordan Rayner, welcome to Wellness Master Q&A. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're quite welcome. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. I know you're quite the talented individual. The first thing is, how was it growing up as a musician uh, with your family being musicians? I know there's a huge influence on you. Give me a little rundown about that. Well, yeah, so my, my whole family, my mom and dad uh, are musicians, my brothers are musicians, and um, I think my dad started out trying to build a baseball team, like they were just trying to have enough kids to have like a full baseball team, and then <laughs> first kid was a girl, and they were like, oh, well, I guess we're going to have to go to plan B, and we'll, we'll build a band instead. So um, started me on drums, and then I moved to guitar and piano and a few other things, and uh, my brother is a fantastic drummer. My youngest brother, he's a piano player, killer piano player. So um, it was it was kind of cool because we were all always competitive with each other and pushing each other. And, you know, particularly me and my brothers, um, anytime we'd play something for one another, like, hey, man, check this out. You know, of course, they're always like, yeah, that sucked. <laughs> so there was always kind of that rival uh, vying for approval and pushing each other to be better. So um, it, it was a, it was a cool thing that brought us together. And we still to this day uh, during holidays and stuff, you know, we break out guitars and stuff. and that's um, kind of a unifying element for us. That's excellent. I didn't even realize how many instruments you play. Give us a run on how many instruments. I was reading your bio and it's like, what, 20 instruments or something like that? It's, it's uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's that many, but I mean, anything with strings, pretty much I can figure it out uh, if I don't know how to play it. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, like banjo, dobro, guitar, um, bass, drums, piano, that kind of thing. Those are, those are the main ones, but like I said, if it's got strings, if I tinker with it long enough, I can get something out of it. So. And you're self-taught, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, because I was too stubborn to take lessons. Well, that's great. From being self-taught, it's very challenging because I try. And that does not happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it just takes um, a lot of discipline and very little social life. So if you don't have friends, you really, you got something special there. Are you one of those people like my friend that would sleep with the guitar, wake up in the middle of the night and start jamming? No, but I will tell you this, like as when I was growing up, anytime we went anywhere, like if my parents said, hey, load up in the car, we're going to Walmart to buy something. Like I put my guitar in the car because I was scared that like the house was going to burn down while we were gone and it wasn't going to be there. So like to this day, everywhere I go, my guitar goes with me. So it's hey, pretty bad. That's your tool. That's your money maker right there. Yeah. But you grew yeah, up well, in a Christian family, so Christian music was your influence. Was that a great way to start music? I know everyone starts in the church for the most part. Yeah, at least that, down here in the South, yeah. Um, so yeah, I grew up on like Michael W. Smith, Stephen Curtis Chapman, those guys, and you know, I thought you know, those were the coolest guys in the world. And Stephen Curtis, particularly, um, I remember like as a 10, kind of 11-year-old, fishing through my mom's CD case, and seeing that CD there and going, well, I wonder who that is, putting it in and hearing something different than I was used to hearing, like with typical Christian music. I, like the track one started out with a guitar doing this. Uh, where is it? And I was like, well, what in the world is that? It was like it had like actual playing and I was like oh, well stuff. I gotta yeah yeah because uh, Christian music doesn't really have that I mean country has a lot of picking and stuff in it so I was like who's the Stephen Curtis Chapman guy so I listened I went and got every CD he had ever made and I, I, I grabbed my guitar and I learned every song he ever recorded lick for lick I would hit the little rewind button note for note learn to play it and I mean that's really where my foundation was was so that's awesome. That was a really great, a great, uh, great uh, example right there. That's the main thing is I'm assuming for you is music for you is therapeutic. Is that correct? And like healing, does that make your, you feel better to write a song or put your emotions and passion into the song? Yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it really was growing up. Um, music was kind of my way to emote and express any, anything that I was going through. And as I've gotten older and kind of my career has unfolded the writing side of it has probably become even more therapeutic than the music side of it because it's like the playing I, I'm a I'm a session guitarist as well I've played on other people's records and I do that a lot 
So that's kind of become work, but the writing has moved and become a release. And so um, I not only write lyrics, but I mean, I do creative writings. For the last five years, I've written one short story a day. I haven't missed a day. So it's just a way to, yeah, kind of get all that life experience and angst and frustration out. What's your favorite instrument out of all the instruments that you know? I'm assuming, but I'm, I'm going to let you say it. So. <laughs> Favorite instrument to play or to hear play? Oh, to play yourself. To, well, guitar, yeah. Guitar, definitely. Yeah. Are you an electric fan or acoustic fan? I'm a, I mean, I'm an acoustic fan just because of my own limitations. I wish so bad that I had that um, gene in me that could rip an electric guitar. I, I want to be that so bad and I work really hard at it. It just has never clicked for me. Some people, you know, they said like, hey, it's like riding a bike. One day it'll just click. 30 years, it's never clicked. So I stick with acoustic just due to my talent pool. But picking is very challenging. I know a lot of people that have a hard time picking and individual note placement, jazz scales. That's, yeah. That is complicated. That's not easy either. No, it's not. But um, th that is kind of the thing that I've spent my time on. And so thankfully, that that gear, like riding a bike, did click for me. So um, I've got my own little wheelhouse and it, it works. I've been watching on YouTube and I got to admit everybody out there listen to Jordan Rayner because that music is awesome. It's different. It's what, 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 if you were to classify yourself as a country artist, what uh, what kind of country would it be? Folk, um, new modern or in between or a jazzy kind of funk or it's like, you know, if I were to try to put a label on what I do in country music, I would call it maybe uh, trashy outlaw. <laughs> OK, that is that's pickup yeah. truck style right <laughs> yeah well I, I love johnny cash I and mean, that's why i wear black every day i mean i just i love the color black i love to play in prisons i love to entertain in prisons uh so johnny cash has got like a soft spot in my heart so like taking a little female take on the outlaw country has been really fun that's that, that is excellent because i know the that's something that's done a lot not as much nowadays it's a little more right. modernized like rock and roll and then mixed in the, everything is mixed rapping is even in country nowadays right yeah yeah so everybody's got their own take on it but that's just kind of what's most authentic to me because i got i've been told i have an attitude at times so the music is reflects that a little bit that's okay that's no worries attitude's okay the one thing yeah. for our listeners out there what struggles have you dealt with and overcome uh from today from when you started music or is there anything that you deal with like stage fright or anxiousness or for us to learn from you what methods do you use to kind of get over all that while you're performing or what has been your struggle throughout your life overall um i do i have massive stage fright um not so much when it's just me and a guitar if it's just me and a guitar i could play for ten thousand people that's not a big deal but there's something about being in that full band element for me where it feels bigger. It feels like a bigger deal. And so I get kind of psyched up in my head that I've got to be perfect because I've almost got this tendency um, to feel like an imposter. Like no matter how small or big of a stage I'm on, there's like this little voice in the back of my head that says you don't deserve to be here. And so when I'm with like my full band and everything, it almost feels like, oh, well now you're, you're playing like you're all big and bad. Like you, you got, you know, you got the band behind you, you got the lights and all this stuff. And so it's like, for some reason, I put more pressure on myself, the bigger the setting is. Um, I played a stadium show with Eli Young and Walker Hayes last year. I think it was around March. And so it, it was really surreal being backstage you know, there's smoke all in the room. You hear the bass going, you know, the band's going. And they call your name, Nashville's Woman in Black, Jordan Rayner, and you step up and there's a stadium out there. And it's full of people. And it's it's everything that you like. You've seen on CMT, you've seen on music videos, except it's you. And, you know, it's it's that feeling of I've got to be perfect. I can't screw up. Everybody's got it. That's a thing, too. Like back in the day, like in Johnny Cash's day, there was just a crowd of people and the people that were there in that moment in that show that's who was there that was it but today you know you step out on a stage and everybody in the front row what are they doing they've got a camera it's forever anything and everything you do is forever and so even that pressure of being like if i screw up and i'm missing no you know that's on twitter tomorrow <laughs> so the way that i 
try to conquer that is, I mean, I haven't figured out a foolproof way. For me, it's just try to be in the moment. I'll find one person, maybe one or two people in the crowd that are really into it. And I'll kind of lock in and I'll play with them and be like, okay, I like your energy. You're here. You've got the right attitude. Let me feed off of that attitude. And um, I take as much as I give. And, and that, that tends to help is just to kind of focus on one person, uh, smirk at them, play with them a little bit, and they play back. And that's a way to kind of get out of your own head and out there where you're supposed to be. I've heard that from a lot of people from performers look at an audience member, play to, the, mm. play to people in the back of the room, to the left, to the right. right. You really make, they want the connection with you and that's really right. important. And they said that self-talk is really important. Like telling yourself you mm. can do it, that you're the, right. oh, you're the champ. Cause you know, you have the skills. It's just, you don't want to, cause I have anxiety off the wall and I have to breathe. And honestly, what you just did there in that big audience, I would run the other way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I run backwards. I'm like, I'm done with this. So. Right. Right. That's why I'm asking you for p other people listening out there that really want to get good at performing the coping mechanisms, that's the biggest part. What, what in your head do you do? Is there anything special that you kind of imagine besides playing to a person? Is there anything to help you breathe or counting or anything skill-wise um, that helps you? Yeah, you, you know, honestly, at this point, like while the show's going on, it, it, it's kind of a blur for me. Like there's, it's so chaotic and it's so quick moving that I don't have time. So all the prep and every, all the self-talk, all the breathing, it's kind of done beforehand in the, you know, in the green room backstage. It's, you know, getting yourself, it's kind of like going out on football field or in a, any competition where like you got to get your head space right. It is, it's breathing. It's, you know, I, I honestly, you can't overrate the, the breathing exercises. I, I know it kind of sounds, some people think that's kind of a little out there or whatever, but really just sitting down, even if you have to tell your band, hey, just step out of the room for a minute, taking 10 minutes to just breathe in for five, out for five, in for five, out for five, and get your heart rate where it needs to be. And then you got to hope that that carries you through the show, or at least I do, because once I'm on stage, it's, it's out of my control. It's go time, yeah. And the bands are yeah. team sort of backing you up, so that's excellent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got such a great, great group, group of guys behind me that are there on a kind of on a blood level. They're not just there because I pay them to be. They're there because they believe in what we're doing. So it's the best thing you could hope for. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you have such a good family of musicians. Mm, yeah. But Jordan Rayner is going to tell us a little bit more about herself, her wellness journey, and play us a song when we come back after a word from our sponsor. We're back, and we're with Jordan Rayner, country music artist. Jordan, give us a little rundown about your health and wellness and what you do to mm -hmm. stay fit and what's your exercise of choice that keeps you going or that you enjoy Great. To keep yourself fit? Um, well, I mean, honestly, I mean, you're a big part of my fitness journey. You have been for the better half uh, of a year uh, over the last six months or so. And so I'm really grateful that I've gotten to know you, not just as a trainer, but as a friend. Um, my experience with you has been extremely encouraging. It's been extremely patient. Uh, I'm somebody that when I'm vulnerable, if I'm doing something uh, that I'm not particularly good at, I, I do, I still have that performance anxiety of I'm going to make a fool of myself. And I, when I'm working out, even with you, there have been days where I just get so in my head that it's almost crippling. And for, for you to have had the patience to walk through that with me, to give me other options as far as, uh, like you said, self-talk and that kind of thing. Um, that's been really, really great. But um, health and wellness, I grew up in a family where we didn't take that into account at all. We ate whatever we wanted, whenever we wanted, how much of it we wanted every day. And that's just, that's how I grew up. And a few years ago, I just kind of hit a breaking point. I was about 50 pounds overweight and I was miserable. I didn't feel good about myself. Didn't uh, like anything I tried on, you know, and I was like, you know what, not only do I just not look good, but like when I'm doing shows, I'm out of breath. I don't feel good. I mean, like I've got to be moving, playing and singing. And that takes breath. That takes, you know, fitness. And so um, I lost 50 pounds on my own, just going on the treadmill, going out for a walk every day, um, eating four or five small meals a day, about 100 calories each and then one decent 
meal in the evening. And I did that for about a year, year and a half. And I, I dropped about 50 pounds and um, COVID hit. And I put about 10 back on that I really am not happy about. And I'm trying to work those off right now. But um, kickboxing has been like my main new way, thanks to you. Again, you're the one that introduced me to that. And it's been a way for me to kind of feel badass and um, find a new way to move my body and challenge myself mentally, physically. So that's been like my new outlet over the last few months. Yeah, you should see Jordan in the gym when we kickbox together. She kicks that bag to no to that, that bag is done. That's really, really yeah. good. I was about to say kickboxing because I know that's yeah. one of the things that you enjoy the most and you have a punching bag, you have the boxing gloves yeah. and it's yeah. a great outlet for de-stressing. So anyone out there that wants to reduce stress, get into some type of kickboxing or yeah. some type of movement oriented uh, activity. Right. Especially if you're a high emotion person where like you, you, you experience like a physiological response from the amount of emotions that go through your body, having a physical outlet is, is so important. And that has helped me through several like anxiety episodes, anger episodes. Cause I, I just came off of divorce, man. I've, I got some stuff I'm working through. And so, yeah, that bag has been almost as important as a guitar. That's great. So you don't want to punch the guitar, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I can't afford that. I understand. Not like those heavy metal guys that smash it on stage. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, those guys have endorsements and they get supplied with a new guitar every night. Must be nice. Exactly. For musicians, do you think every musician should exercise on the road and even at home to better themselves as well as perform better and just for general longevity so that they don't get sick on stage or something bad happened to them while they're in their career? I mean, I, I would recommend it. If you've got the discipline to do it, absolutely. Because, I mean, working out, it doesn't just, you know, keep your gut from hanging over your pants. I mean, it, it helps your immune system. It helps your, your mental state. You know, there's, I can tell a difference when I'm not working out, like my mental state takes a dive. I'm more negative. I pick myself apart more. And of course you, you, you feel a little more bloated and you, I mean, like you, you just are not, I'm naturally more hard on myself. So yeah, dude, if you can work out on the road, make a routine of it the best you can. Um, it definitely can't hurt anything. So. And it's touring is stressful. Is that correct? Because like getting on the road, going place to place, getting lack of sleep, you got to keep your body fit or you're going to run down and not be able to tour. Absolutely. I, I did a stint last year before COVID hit. And I mean, every night we were in a different town and, you know, we were either on a train, bus or a plane, you know, twice a day. You know, we were there getting off a plane in the morning, setting up for a show and then leaving and getting on a plane that night and going somewhere else. Or, you know, I mean, it's it's demanding. And, and even if you're not, you know, necessarily going that hard, maybe you're doing one or two shows a month and, you know, you're driving yourself to them, you still you've got to have that stamina to be able to perform and to, to stay positive, to keep up with your social media. Social media is such a big thing now. So, I mean, it's just, um, there's something about working out that increases your overall drive to stay active. So uh, yeah, it just, it helps in every facet of life, in my opinion. I hope all the musicians are listening to you because that's a great inspiration to be mm -hmm. uh, telling other musicians, hey guys, you got to do something. I mean, you do. I mean, dad, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a gym rat by any stretch I mean shoot I'm not a seven days a week but you know I do try at least three or four days a week to get in the gym at least hit the treadmill for an hour lift a few weights and just get those endorphins going and um it, it goes a long way it, it definitely does and I do appreciate you putting all the hard work in and working out I saw that you were a published uh, musician and you wrote with mm -hmm. some big names give us a little rundown about that how exciting it was to see someone that you looked up to and like oh I'm riding with them today it man I, I still just I, I I'm continually amazed at, at the rooms that I stumble into. Um, one of the highlights for me a couple of years ago was I was doing a show and um, Craig Morgan was there in the audience and I didn't know that he was. Um, so I, I finished my show, then I went backstage and Craig Morgan was standing backstage and of course him and his little sideways smile goes, "Hey Jordan Rayner, my name is Craig Morgan. I just, I really enjoyed your show, you know." And I was like, "You don't have to introduce yourself to me. I know who you are." And uh, he said, man, I, I'd love to write with you sometime. We, we need to write us a song. And I was like, okay. And he took my phone out of my hand, put his number in my phone. And he said, okay, just just call me up and we'll write one. And I thought, okay, cool. I thought he'll never remember me. And I, I texted him like the next day. And he said, yeah, yeah, man, uh, me and my buddies were out. We're headed out on the tour bus to Ohio tomorrow. Why don't you hop on the bus and we'll write. And 
I wound up on a tour bus with Craig Morgan writing a song on the way to Ohio. Wow. Um, right so, I mean, that right was like, time. huh? The right place at the right time. Right place, right time. And that's kind of how, you know, my whole career has been. It's just kind of luck of the draw. It, the biggest thing I've learned in five years is just show up. Um, if you're booked to write, if you're booked to be at a show, if somebody invites you to a show that they're playing, show up. Don't just tell them you're going to because you never know who you're going to run into, who you're going to meet, who you're going to reconnect with. Um, you just you can't find success in Nashville if you don't show up. So That's a really good, a good advice. Definitely. You got to be there to make it. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I, I've been really lucky to write with some some really talented people, some great artists, some great writers, and it's only made me better. And I'm hoping I got a lot left to do. This is the big part of the show everyone's waiting for. Jordan, give us an idea what song you're going to sing, the name of it, and how you uh, wrote this song or what inspired you to write this song. And then we'll hear the awesome song you got going on. All right. So uh, what I'm going to play for you is my current single called Crossfire. It's available on Spotify, YouTube, uh, any platform that music is streamed. Um, there's a couple of different versions of it. I've got an acoustic version of it out. Um, but I was writing with one of my best friends of all time. Her name's Heidi Ray. And she's an incredible artist in her own right. It's Heidi R-A-Y-E. Um, she's freaking great. And then uh, Josh Gleaves is the other writer on this. He produces for Chris Young and a few other people. Um, so it was our first write, all three of us together. And it was Heidi's idea. She said, I have this word, like this idea called crossfire. And I don't really know, like, you know, what it would mean. And I said, well, look, I'm I'm looking for kind of a rough, tough, badass song for myself. Um, you know, maybe we could tell a story type song. And I said, I said something kind of like the Miranda Lambert vein. And she said, well, what if we uh, like killed off your husband? And I said, <laughs> that'll work. So we kind of just talked about the story and we laid a lot of groundwork like, okay, well, who's this woman in the song? What's her character? What's her motive? Why does she kill him? How does she kill him? And, I mean, we literally, we kind of wrote a short novel before we tipped away at it and carved the song out of it. It took two writing sessions to get it, but the final product I'm really proud of. You want to play it for you? Oh, yeah, especially. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to hear it. Yeah. Oh, yes, most definitely. The floor is all, right, all yours. Boys. All right. Hanging clothes on the line Watching him sneaking out of her kitchen Getting sugar on the side When he came home, I had a whiskey waiting Like I do every night But he was good as down After one little taste of bitter sweet cyanide Crossfire, dodge your eyes like a bullet Crossfire, the talk of the town the great pot buzzing about a missing husband nowhere to be found but out back where the roses grow we're good for another line she lovers go the truth is very it's just between the good lord and let alone Sheriff says, sure smells funny, and I ain't shed a tear. And the preacher says he ain't seen me on a Sunday since the fool disappeared. Now, Betty Lou said she saw me with a shovel, and Mary Joe heard a shot. Rumors fly about a drag out struggle, but gossip's all they got. Crossfire, dodging your eyes like a bullet. Crossfire, the talk of the town, the great boss buzzing out. I'm missing her, nowhere to be found. But out back where the roses grow, the different good lines he lovers know. The truth is very and it's just between the good Lord and the lonely. When the cops came knocking to take me to the pen Everybody and the mama on a full on watching Waiting on seeing Crossfire, dodging eyes like a woman Crossfire, the dog in the town The great lines buzzing out 
mixing hugs and neighbor's dog just found out back where the roses grow. We're good for another life in lovers' fall. The truth is out, but I made my peace with the good Lord and let alone. Nice. Very, very nice. Thanks. Everybody go and download that single. That was excellent. Thank you. You're very welcome. And that was really, really your style right there. Like that's a great example of what you got going on for you. And yeah, I hope this interview in a few a year from now is like I, I knew her when, right? Yeah. Totally I hope so too, it. man. But that is great. Give us an idea how we can find that song. I know you said Spotify and other places, but what is your uh, contact information for people to contact you for shows, for gigs, or anything else that you want to talk about that I didn't mention? Yeah, um, so you can find me on Instagram at the Jordan Rainer, R-A-I-N-E-R. -E and uh, if you want to direct message me there, you can get a hold of me. I also have a Facebook fan page. I think it's like Jordan Rainer music page or something like that. You can message me there as well but yeah my music is available on spotify and like i said i've got a few different performances and different things on youtube as well you i'm not hard to find so that's great and for people um is there anything else you want to include that i uh you want to tell people about anything new coming up anything special any events any contests that uh, hmm. vote for you uh right now we're working on a second release like i said crossfire is my current single we dropped that last year and uh, I just was talking to my team this morning, actually, and we've got a new single in the queue that we are getting ready to drop, hopefully in the next uh, month or two. So we're just kind of putting the final touches on it. So be watching for that as well, and you're gonna love it. Sounds like a plan, Derek. That's, that's really great. Everybody contact Jordan Rayner. And Jordan, I greatly appreciate you being on the show, sharing your music with us and your inspiration of being fit, musically inclined, and also teaching other people and sharing your story with us. But thank you. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. You're quite welcome and enjoy and have an awesome day. You too, man. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye.